Here we have a 19 inch gold sludge color TV from 1995. This set was brought to me by, well, let's just say, a member of the lowest common denominator of society, and he was complaining that it had vertical issues. If I remember right, it was drawn up about halfway from the bottom and stretched out at the top. And I replaced about oh, four electrolytic capacitors and got the vertical problem straightened out. The picture looks like crap due to a weak CRT, but you know I've learned over the years not to mess with anybody's picture unless they complain about it. Too many times I've gotten the picture to look a lot better, and then they jump all over me. What'd you do to my television? So you know I didn't touch the picture on this set. Well, that's been probably close to two months ago and when I called the guy to tell him I had it fixed and he wanted to know what the charge was and I said thirty dollars and he about blew a gasket well I'm sorry but if you take something to a shop and you're not willing to spend thirty dollars on it then then you know you probably shouldn't take it in in the first place somebody got all over me whenever I was complaining after the fact about you know, I should have got should have gotten an estimate approved on this first. Well, that might be true, but there again, if you're not willing to spend thirty bucks, then don't even take the thing to the repair shop. Well, long story short, he's been putting me off for the past month and a half, close to two months. You know, the usual excuse is, "I'll get it Friday. I'll get it next week," and you know, as you can see, it's still sitting here. So I called him last week and told him. You know, you've got to this weekend to come get it, or I'm going to put it up for sale. Now, knowing that good and well that I'm not going to get $30 out of this TV, I'll be doing good to get 10 for it. But I just let him know, you know, this is rocked on long enough, I've got my money tied up in it, and you either need to come get it, or I'm selling it. Well, here it is Monday, and it's still sitting here, so as far as I'm concerned, it's up for sale. Turn it on and show you how bad it looks. We have it connected to the DTV converter box. Four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right. As you can see, there's really not that much red. This is important news. Get to something that I can actually receive down here. From mathematicians. Probably what I'm going to do, uh, a friend of mine has located a little flea market in a little rural area close to where he lives, and he says he can actually still sell these old CRT TVs. He can't get much for them, but he can sell them. So he's supposed to be coming to see me in the next few days, and I have this set and a couple more TVs, and I'm just going to sell them to him for whatever he's willing to give me. But first, I'm going to open this set up and rejuvenate the picture tube in it and try to get it looking as good as I can, since it's obvious the owner is not going to come pick it up. Here's the other TV I've got, a little 19-inch Toshiba from 93. It works fine. I actually listed it for sale on all of the various local Facebook uh buy and sell pages, aka baby clothes and cell phone pages. And the only two people I had interested in it backed out when they found out it didn't have A V input jack. So I mean come on, for fifteen bucks what do you expect, you know? Go to Walmart and buy a friggin' R F modulator or stop at the Salvation Army and pick up a VCR for next to nothing and do the same thing. I actually suggested that to one lady, but no, that'd be too much trouble. You know, for 15 bucks, it ought to have the jacks on it, so it's it's going up the road to the flea market if the guy's interested. And the other day, a friend of mine gave me these two little 13-inch sets. One's a Funai, one's a GE Thompson era set. The Funai has no vertical deflection. The GE is dead. I hadn't even opened the GE. The Funai has a bad vertical IC, and I also found the capacitor that killed the IC. 
you know, I could get the parts for about seven bucks shipped, but why, you know? It'd just be something I'd get stuck with, so those sets will be parted out. Okay, let's open the gold sludge and try to polish a turd here. Okay, here's the inside of the set with the BNK 470 CRT tester connected. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why people pull crap like that. If the guy didn't want the set fixed, he just, just she, he should have just told me, you know, look, I, I don't want to fool with that TV. Just sell it or do whatever you want to with it instead of just stringing me along on it. But you know, that's the way people would do you. But I suspect the problem was that you know, if he paid me thirty bucks for fixing this, that would have, that would have cut into his uh, Colt 45 money or his hoe money and. You know, heaven forbid, you can't do that. Okay, we have a CRT tester connected and set up. Let's check our emission. Red gun, not too good. Green's a little better. Blue's about the same as the green. Let's just rejuvenate this thing and see what happens. Let's see. We're on the red gun. Hold the button down until it falls, until the needle falls, or the pointer, or whatever you want to call it. Let's do the green. And by the way, this set uses a Zenith CRT, if I hadn't already said that. You know, Gold Star had a controlling interest in Zenith by 95, so... Probably why it uses a Zenith CRT and you know the same lousy CRTs that were used in Zenith sets that failed in short order. Now let's check our emission. Oh, that went way up. Let me reset this test. Okay, in the process, the blue gun shorted. So let's go over here to remove short. Let's see if I can get a flash in the neck of the tube here. I don't think anything happened. Okay, we got the short cleared. There's red, green, blue. Probably won't last long, but it is what it is. Okay, here it is with the rejuvenated tube. Still not that great, even though I could get the emission to come up. The cutoff didn't come up to par, and the result is I have to have the G2 control on the flyback turned all the way up to get a sufficiently bright picture, but still looks a lot better than it did. Like I said, I'm not too worried about it for something that I might get ten bucks out of from the guy at the flea market. You know, take it like it is. It's an improvement over what it was. You gotta love this crappy digital signal. Yeah, this is probably the kind of crap programming that the guy that owns this or owned this TV watched on it before it stopped working. It's amazing how people want something for nothing. I had a a friend of mine, some friends of his, were bugging the crap out of him wanting a portable record player, so he contacted me to find them one. Well, I went to the trouble and expense to fix up an old Califone school player for him, sent him a Facebook message offering it to him for 35 bucks, and they didn't even have the decency to respond to the message, even though they read it. I guess they expected to get it for 5 bucks. But anyway, they got blocked from my Facebook page, so, you know, they won't be communicating with me again. You know, I don't play those kind of games. If you, if they didn't want it, they should have said so. It's also amazing those same people will go spend $800 on a new iPhone or drop $100 on one meal at a fine restaurant, but they think this kind of stuff they ought to get for nothing. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching, and more to come 